Welcome back to the Hank Strange Situation, Lifestyles of the Locked and Loaded. Make sure to check out HankStrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts. Welcome back to the channel. I'm Hank Strange. Today... We're in St. Augustine, and we're at Andrews Custom Leather, because we got this guy, Sam Andrews, here with us. Sam, how's it going? Well, thank you. Today, we're going to talk about five things, right, Sam? Five yeah. things you need to know or think about before you order a leather holster. Is that the right? Keep things simple and straight. Absolutely. So let's get into it right now. Right, Sam, so I know it can be daunting ordering a leather holster for folks out there, especially the first time. Well, there's so many different ones to choose from. It helps if when you call, you have a specific, at least a general type in mind. It could be a shoulder holster or one that wears outside on the belt, inside waistband, a cross draw. We make many different designs. So number one, they should think about Number How one, they need to carry it. Holster type. Where okay. do you want to wear it? What's your most popular type of holster that you sell? Well, there's actually several. We are very, very well known for our shoulder holsters, the Monarch rigs. Those are super comfortable. They conceal well. I can't build enough of them. And then also our carjacker cross draws, which wrap around and snap on and off quickly. Very convenient. And the inside the waistband holster, the McDaniel, that's been one of our mainstays for decades. Super easy to conceal. So when it comes to type, I think that folks, they want to think, like, where are they and what are they doing with it, right? So I think there's some of the holsters you make, like the shoulder holsters that are more suited to people who are working maybe in law enforcement or in an environment where they have more clothing. Oh, also when they need to carry all day long, your mm -hmm. shoulders can bear more weight okay. more easily for a longer time than your waist can. And many of my law enforcement customers in and out of cars all day, you know, at a desk, walking around, it's up out of the way and it doesn't fatigue you. Right, and then so for example, with the inside, the waistband holster, that's for folks like myself who want something comfortable, but, but they're very, carrying on. Very, very low key. Low key, That can okay. be hidden under a loose t-shirt. You don't wear a lot of covering garments. And then outside the waistband, do you think a lot of people get those to use for training or is it just more comfortable to well, be outside? Many people find it more comfortable not everybody can wear it inside. It's just a matter of personal taste. But the outside ones that we make, they're very low profile, flat, tight to the body. They conceal well. You just have to have a slightly longer cover garment so the end doesn't show. Number one, what type of holster? What type. Okay, what's number two? Which type of gun? I know that sounds obvious, but I've had people call me and say, I've got a nine millimeter, what holster do you have? <laughs> right. <laughs> it makes sense. I that makes sense to me, Seth. <laughs> can't count how many different <laughs> nine millimeters are on the market. <laughs> right. Um, for instance, this Micro 9 and this Model 92 Beretta are both nine millimeters, mm -hmm. but you wouldn't get this gun in a holster made for this one. Okay. Yeah. So it does matter. Yeah, they look completely different. So right. people need to be to know specifically, hey, I've got a SIG okay. P320. Make and model is very helpful to the discussion. What other things would folks want to think about? Number three, any modifications to the gun, extended mm -hmm. safeties, adding a red dot sight on top of the slide, Anything that might change the shape, we need to know about ahead of time. Some things we can't do anything for, such as a flashlight or a laser that goes underneath the weapon, changes the overall shape and profile extremely. Sorry, we don't make anything for those. Dude, so you don't do those. Do you do red dots? Red dot on top of the slide, this is not a problem because okay. it's just a matter of cutting the leather to relieve around the sight. Okay. It doesn't change what is going in the holster. All right, so I'm assuming the thing with the lights is obviously it needs to push through that holster and then it needs to be a material that can change to conform to that. 
which yeah. doesn't really happen so much. So Most of what you see made for lights will be in the Kydex. Right, so go to Kydex for that, but if you do have a red dot. Red dot, no problem at all. Okay, when they call you up, which we'll, we'll get to later, that's something they need to specify. That's specific, yes. Okay. Number four. Number four. Number four, color. We have three main colors. There's the natural oil finish, the russet brown, that's the most popular. You'll see that color in most of our catalog pictures. Black, never a problem to do them in black, and dark chocolate. We can do other colors, but those are the three most popular and main colors that we work in. Okay, so before we move on from colors, in the case of some of the custom stuff that you do, you do have different skins, right? So the exotic all skins. So all I was folks... speaking of was regular cowhide holes. Okay, if they do regular cowhide, those. yeah. Once you get into the exotics, there's all kinds of different yeah. colors, textures, yeah. materials. You can go down a rabbit hole. It can get pretty confusing. Right, yeah. because with lizard, let's say, or shark, you can still have different colors. Oh, absolutely. That. Okay, so, all right, so that's number four. What's number five, Sam? Number five is best way to order or ask questions, call us. I prefer to speak directly with everybody. This really requires good communication, so texts and emails and things not supreme for doing custom holster work. One-on-one mm -hmm. -on -one conversation, I can ask questions, I can get the details right the first time. Yeah, and I think that's not just for you. I think for anyone out there getting a custom holster, mm -hmm. especially in leather, you probably need to talk to those people that are doing that. It prevents all sorts of miscommunications. Yes, and everyone, I'm just gonna jump in on this one since that's the last one and we're gonna wrap it up. Sam knows very little about technology. <laughs> Smoke signals to Sam is newfangled technology. It'll never catch on. <laughs> so, I'm messing around, but I mean, I see people all the time that are trying to text you, uh, do all kinds of stuff. They really do need to talk to you, and Sam is here all the time. And what you need to do is call the shop, right? I'm here about every waking moment. Yes, yeah, so how do they do that? How do they call you? Well, at our website, catalog, andrewsleather.com, there's all the information there to get in touch with us, or you can call 904. 679-4997. It'd mostly be me who picks up. Absolutely, Sam. <laughs> Thanks so much, man. This was great. I hope you guys find this helpful. As I said, if you want to get more details and stuff like that, please call up. But you know, think about these holsters before you call up and go through that list that Sam said, and it's gonna help make it a It'll lot be easier. Happy to help. Absolutely. We're out of here. We'll see you guys on the next one. Peace. Make sure to check out handstrange.com. You can sign up for our email list and find ways to follow and support our efforts.